here in Santa Fe, New Mexico. I was uh, born and raised in New Mexico, uh, born in 1956, and have been here all my life, except for some short excursions to other parts of the world to live for a while, and back here to Santa Fe. We've been here for 20 years. Since the colonial period, because New Mexico was settled by Franciscans and, and Spanish colonists in 1598, uh, they brought Catholicism to New Mexico, and by the but, you know, New Mexico was occupied in 1598 and then abandoned in 1680 and then reoccupied in 1692. And from 1692 on, you know, as more and more colonists, more and more Hispanic settlers came to the area and, and were, you know, building churches and chapels and having a dormant for their own houses, they couldn't rely on the trade between, you know, Mexico, what was New Spain at that time, and the frontier, this colonial frontier. So they, a tradition started making images of saints. So santos are images of saints, either carved images referred to as boltos or flat images known as retablos. And I do both. What you see in the show are, are the retablos, the flat images. They're, they're equivalent to Greek or Russian icons. Yeah. Same kind of thing. They're windows of the divine. They're stories of the saints. And each saint has particular iconography associated with that saint. So people understand the story. Saint Joseph, for instance, is always depicted with a uh, flowering staff, uh, part of one of those apocryphal stories of, of uh, you know, Joseph coming to a temple and, and the Virgin Mary standing in front of him and you know, he's with six other guys and I always say the six dudes and, and Joseph and the, the, the staff blossoms and all of a sudden it's a sign from God that Joseph is a chosen one. So he's always shown with a staff that has flowers on it, mm. flowering staff. So every saint has his or her association with colors. He's depicted in green yellow and red, those three colors associated with Joseph because you know, green is new life, yellow is a symbol of marriage, and uh, red is a symbol of sacrifice. So every color is associated with saints. So the New Mexican pieces were traditional in the sense of European iconography, but they were homemade. They were untrained artists who were trying to, to provide images for the local population. And what I've tried to do is, is continue in that tradition by using homemade colors and natural pigments and doing everything but you know not th these aren't store-bought products these are these right. are natural pigments you know I use some store-bought products now like for the instance the the trucks have uh, silver watercolor on them because I want the bumpers to look like you know like chrome you know so I'm using silver watercolor but other than that traditional part, part of it is you know so many people understand the New Mexican tradition is a very serious tradition and and a nature tradition, you know, since the colonial period here. And most of the depictions of saints from New Mexico are, are, tend to be serious. And, you know, a number of years ago, I started doing the pickup trucks, kind of in a lighthearted way of, of telling the same exact story as the saints, but put them in a modern setting. And I figured, you know, if the saints were to appear in New Mexico, uh, and they needed to get around to do their good deeds, they probably would jump into a pickup truck, yeah. and, you know, or a, or a classic car, you know. You, uh, so I put them in, I put the saints in classic automobiles, uh, mostly things from the 60s back to the 30s, and uh, dress them in their traditional iconography, and um, try and tell the stories with, with the saints in a very modern sense, you know, using, for instance, St. Anthony's, patron saint of lost objects. He's always depicted holding the Christ child in his arms. And in New Mexico, he's wearing blue because Franciscans wore blue here, not the brown or the gray we typically associate him with. But he's patron saint of lost objects, people who lose things. So they pray to Anthony. You know, in fact, you know, as a kid, I used to hear other Catholic children say, Anthony, turn around, something's lost and must be found, and yeah. things <laughs> like that. So Anthony, all over the world, patron saint of lost objects. So I put him in a pickup truck. And the pickup truck, uh, you know, he's driving the pickup truck, and the Christ child is standing next to him. He doesn't have a safety belt on, you know. He's a little bit, off, you know, he's a little bit not, not, not appropriate for kids nowadays. And he's holding on to Anthony like, you know, like kids used to do. They used to hold on to their parents, stand up in the seat. But the side of the truck, pickup truck, says Tony's lost and found. You know, so it's telling the same story, but putting them in a modern context. You know? and, and, and not saying St. Anthony, but Tony in more of an enduring term for St. Anthony. Yeah. So. I went 
up to the village called Abiquiu. It's a village in northern New Mexico. Abiquiu is, if, you, if anybody knows anything about Abiquiu, it's because of George O'Keefe. Yeah. And uh, George O'Keefe went to live in Abiquiu many, many, many years ago. But I went up there to work as an archaeologist. As, an ar as a young man, as a 21-year-old archaeologist for the community. And I got involved with that community. And then I started doing research on the Spanish colonial mission that I was excavating. And got fascinated with the, the descriptions of the saints that were in there and started making some of my own and realized there was a tradition that had almost been lost because all the contemporary saint makers in New Mexico were using modern pigments. They were using, you know, watercolors and oils and uh, I mean, uh, uh, store-bought acrylics. And I thought, no, you know, we've lost a tradition almost. Let's revive it. So when I was 22 and 23 years old, that was 20, you know, 26, 27 years ago, I started doing uh, research on on natural pigments, and uh, actually, soon thereafter, I started making my own pigments, started making my own gesso, started making my own varnish, and and I literally, it's been longer. Let me think. I painted my first Santo in 1976, 77. So it's been 20, 33 years since I painted my first mm -hmm. Santo, and it's there. There you go. Now, what church were you excavating up there? It was the Abiquiu? ruins of a, a church called Santa Rosa de Lima, the Abiquiu. It was the first Spanish church built up in the Abiquiu area, built in 1734. And 